Hi, Con. Hey, Bob. Great to be on with you. Good to be on with you. Haven't seen you in a while. You've moved since at least I last <laughs> dialogued you to the examiner. Is that right? Well, actually, you know, Bob, to be technical, we have never actually done a dialogue together. I'm, Wait, I'm, we never have, really? No, I am honored I am honored to be on with you. Uh, I've met you in person a couple times. Right. I mean, that's why I'm confused, because we've actually spoken in person. That's right. Um, huh. Because I had long requested a matchup with you, and... and uh, <laughs> Well, you have to get—you have to blame your staff for that one. I, my staff, I guess, wanted to let the drama build. There you go. Um, and now here we are at a climactic moment in history, which is that uh, as we tape this, the uh, uh, Congress has not passed the budget deal. No, it's about it's about deal. four in the afternoon, and um, the the House and Senate. I I don't think have set times for their votes yet. Not, nothing firm, but uh, um, but we think it's going to pass, and we rely entirely on your political judgment here, since I have none. But we think it's going to pass. Yeah, right? it's looking that way. Mansion just just broke in the Senate, so it looks like the Senate's going to pass it, and we got the House. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Cantor and Ryan are say they have the votes, but they say but they they said last time they did, and they they ended up having to delay it. Uh, but uh, but we'll see. I I did read that the the. Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats aren't whipping it, but uh, I, I still think they'll come up with uh, the 60 votes needed. Um, Boehner still says they're going to get a majority of the majority to pass it. Uh, I, I think they get mm -hmm. it done. So I, like uh, many people on the left, feel kind of vaguely outraged uh, toward Obama, and, and, and this is certainly being depicted as, as not, not exactly enhancing Obama's stature the way this has played out, but you've written uh, a little, little, couple of little zeitgeist busting uh, pieces or pieces that aspire to bust the zeitgeist on the examiner today arguing that actually this thing um, isn't so bad for Obama and by the way did you notice that one of the two items you wrote was kind of echoed by Nate Silver two hours later on the home page of the New York Times did you notice that oh uh, well you know all these names floating around Bob it's 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 just right. trying to keep ownership of them who are you to claim that Nate Silver exactly, exactly. is stealing your material? He's a you, smart you guy. Did a dialogue, you did a dialogue with Nate Silver once, right? I, I, did, I did the first dialogue with Nate Silver. Yeah, yeah no, uh, baseball guy, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan, so, right. uh, yeah. Um, no, um, you know. But, but tell us what the argument is. Sure, there. sure. So, so basically, I just uh, look ahead, and I, I looked at um, kind of what I thought was going to happen and what in um, basically three policy areas that I think Obama... Uh, either by by luck or by strategy, is actually uh, positioned uh, pretty well. Should should he win the the 2012 election, uh, mm -hmm. which, which is kind of a big if. But um, you know, if if he does if he does win, you know what what you're looking at is. Uh, and, and by the way, I'm also assuming here, um, I, the deeply cynical guy that I am, also assuming that the the super Congress will come and go, and nothing will get approved, and that will just go down in flames. So you think the trigger things will get triggered? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll go into the why. I mean, we'll go into a little explanation for why. Uh, you know, basically, um, in order for any type of deal to get done, e even a revenue neutral deal. I mean, we're not even talking about tax tax cuts here. Um, mm -hmm. Tax cuts are just off the table, not going to happen. Uh, but even in title reform um, is not going to happen. Remember, you know, Ryan was a was a no vote on the Bowl Simpson Commission, and not because of taxes. And and I believe I believe Ryan would sign off on uh, tax reform that that cut loop that cut loopholes. Uh, but that wasn't his reason for going against Bowl Simpson. Ryan's reason was for going against Bowl Simpson was because it legitimized Obamacare. It, it reformed entitlements and and set up uh, a deficit savings but left the structure of Obamacare intact. And so I just okay. don't think you're going to get any Republicans on the Super Congress Committee to sign off on entitlement reform that, that doesn't strike at the core of Obamacare. And on the flip side of that, you're not getting any Democrats. They're going to, you know, sign off on repealing Obamacare. So okay. the, the Super Congress I, goes down in flames. So the, and the way the deal is set up is that, okay, they do some these initial cuts, which justify this initial raising of the debt ceiling, and, th and then the Super Congress thing kicks in, which is to say uh, a, a, a committee of, divided e equally between Republicans and Democrats in both the Senate and the House tries to come up with a proposal for the next round of cuts. That's You're, you're saying they are not even going to agree and get something out on the floor to be voted on? Correct. Or, or just that, Correct. Okay. And, and, and in that case, if either that happens or they do get something out on the floor and it doesn't get, uh, get the support of, of both houses, then these automatic uh, cuts kick in 
which I guess are kind of vaguely specified at this point, I assume, but they consist of like percentages to be taken out of defense and percentages to be taken out of like Medicare. Um, Medicaid and Social Security are safe, as I understand Correct. it, right? Okay, so you're predicting the triggers kick in, and you're saying that this is uh, that this is good for Obama. Well, so here's what happens. You know, um, you know, just just one more assumption we have here uh, is that uh, there's there's no way that um, the Bush tax cuts uh, get extended. Um, I know liberals are super scared that uh, Obama is going to cave on this, but it's it's going to be election year. Um, he, he's going to need them. Um, there is just no time between now and November of next year when a deal could be struck. So, so the Bush tax cuts automatically expire unless right. That, that's the key. Congress it's, changes it's, it's not something. A one, right. Uh, when at the end of it, it, uh, it's it's another midnight. It's uh you know uh, J January first of, of 2013. 13. 13. 13. Okay. Okay. But here's what I don't get. And here, by the way, you're in line with Ezra Klein. You both depicted this as like good news. The tax cuts um, are going to expire. You're destroying my credibility, Bobby. First, you said I was well, Nate well, Silver. Now I'm Ezra I, Klein. I want to argue with both of you. Here's what I don't get. You're, <laughs> you're, uh, it seems to me Ezra is buying into this stereotype that Democrats just like raising taxes broadly. No. Liberals don't like raising taxes broadly. They like raising taxes on rich people. And the trouble is that what expires is both the tax cuts on the rich and the tax cuts on everybody else, right? So, right. So I, I think I think you're actually pointing out where I disagree with Ezra. Is that Ezra thinks that uh, the Democrats are in a great bargaining position on the books tax cuts in order to force mm -hmm. some type of deal? I disagree. I think that uh, the Democrats of Obama have no leverage to get the deal that they want before the election. Uh, Ezra thinks that they have a great negotiation for, for a deal in order to get um, the tax cuts on just the uh, upper class to, to above the 250000 So Ezra does envision Obama separating the over $250,000 income taxpayers from the rest and just getting the, the and, and, and having the tax cuts expire only on the rich people? I, I believe from the post that I, that, that I read that you know he, he thinks the, uh, the Democrats are in a better bargaining position on this one. Which, 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 which see, is different. How does, how does he see that happening? I mean, what does he, he see Obama doing at that point? It's just saying, look, um, I, I mean, it seems like Obama would have to say, um, look, uh, I'm going to let uh, both of these tax, uh, tax cuts expire unless uh, Congress agrees to, uh, to let me separate the two and just let the rich tax cuts expire, right? He has to make that threat, right? Right. No, I mean, he, he, does, he does have to threaten that, and I think Ezra thinks that that, 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 that threat is credible. Um, I, don't think, I don't think he's very credible as a threatener at this point, for one thing. <laughs> I mean, really. No, no, I, I, I agree. That, that's why I think, I think the better play would for him to, to just say, you know, I, I can't deal with this Congress. Uh, the, these, these tax cuts are going to go up January 1st. Um, but you know, as, as new, you know, it's starting in January 2013. Uh, we're then gonna we're then gonna lower taxes. I mean, that that was actually you know uh, a funny thing. Do you remember that mm. blow up? Um, I think it was last week with Washington Post and Grover Norquist over what would and would not violate the pledge. Missed it. Okay, so uh, Grover goes in and talks to the Washington Post editorial board, and uh, they spin uh, they start spinning these hypotheticals, trying to you know uh, get him to admit that that sometimes. Uh, tax hike would be okay with the pledge, and mm -hmm. um, you know the, the hypothetical that they spin him is that uh, Mitt Romney um, becomes president and uh, lets the Bush tax cuts expire, and then raises them, uh, and and then you know cuts them from the levels after they've already gone up, but to a lower mm -hmm. level. And so their question to to Grover was, would that be a violation of his pledge? And Grover said, no, it wouldn't be. And so the Washington Post don't create and say, oh, Grover signed off and says some, high, some tax hikes are okay. But that's not actually well, what he said. What, what, yeah, what he said was tax cuts, that la tax hikes that last for 24 hours are okay, right? <laughs> right. Well, essentially that's true, is that the reason why what Romney would do in that case would not be a violation of the pledge is that there would be no vote or law passing that would uh, be raising taxes that would violate the pledge. Is that right. just letting okay. them expire, ha letting a non-event or letting a non-event happen. Uh, uh -huh. Would not be violating the pledge. He can't, Grover, you know. Grover can't police people for what they don't do. He can only police people for what they do do. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, in that sense, you know, uh, that leaves the door open for Obama in 2013 as well. If the tax cuts expire, 
all of a sudden you have a whole bunch of Republicans that can still live up to their ATR tax pledge and cut taxes, but do it on Obama's terms. Okay, and, and is the scenario that Obama that he lets the, the tax cuts expire and then introduces legislation a day later or whatever to, 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 to cut reinstate taxes. the tax cuts on the middle income right. taxpayers? Right. Well, I'm for that. Is that is that plausible? I, I would just think, given the fact that the, that that the Republicans have the capacity to block that, right? Uh, I mean, depending on the composition of Congress, but but um, I mean, don't they have the capacity to block any piece of legislation? in the Senate, given the filibuster, and not to mention a majority in the House. I mean, right. So, okay, so but you're, you're missing what the big changeover is, is that before, if, if they do it in December, right, Yeah. they are, um, they, they, they are you know, voting against, they're blocking legislation that would raise taxes. But if they sure. wait till January, all of a sudden, they're doing the opposite. They, no, they are blocking yeah, legislation for tax cuts. Fine, I understand that. What I'm saying is, how can Obama be confident if he lets the tax cuts uh, expire on on everyone, that he will have the political power to get the tax cuts uh, uh, reinstated for middle income. I mean, is he just does you know later? Does, does is he just sure that the Republicans would not stand in the way of a tax cut for middle income uh, people? I think it'd be next to impossible for them to do so. I mean, for, okay. for one thing, they wouldn't have Grover's pledge to stopping them anymore, would they? No. Um, and uh, you, just to circle back to the original post you're talking about is, you know, Obama would have two other big advantages. Uh, you know, the, the second one would be that, you know, since the super uh, Congress uh, trigger went through, now all of a sudden there's, uh, you know, close to, I think, what, uh, around uh, 800 uh, billion to a trillion dollars in, in defense cuts that, uh -huh. that uh, nobody really wants. So, uh, you know, Obama can, you know, all of a sudden has that hanging over the GOP's head, too. That gives him even more leverage to, to um, uh, get, a, get a tax cut deal that he wants Okay, to. I guess I just kind of imagine the, the Republicans saying, no, no, we are proposing a tax cut for everyone, and we're not going to budge. And Obama's saying, no, we want a tax cut just for the middle income. And in my experience, when it's Obama versus anybody, Obama loses. <laughs> you know? I'm sorry. He's a terrible negotiator. He thinks that your opening offer should be what you envision as your final compromise. And, uh, you know, he, he refuses to use the power of the pulpit and take his case to the people. I mean, we're sitting here at a time when there's huge grassroots resentment of fat cats who supposedly, you know, uh, got us into this economic mess and then further enriched themselves as we were trying to dig ourselves out of it. He's got that political moment, and yet he can't apparently go to the people and get support for uh, higher taxes on rich people. He, you know, he, ha he doesn't even seem to want to try. And, and so I just... Well, I mean, the, uh, you know, the Chuck Todd in me wants to argue that he never did. Uh, you know, Bowl Simpsons came out in December. That had uh, tax, cut, tax hikes in it. Uh, that got rid of uh, uh, loopholes for oil for companies and, and corporate jets. Um, and, yeah, but he, and he didn't yeah. go for it. He, he totally dismissed it because of the uh, entitlement cuts in it. Well, in any event, he did later he did later try to get that version of of revenue increases. You, you know, and his deal with ba his deal with Boehner did include that component. But I mean, I would have gone all out, you know, and said we we want higher taxes tax rates on rich people, and it's over my dead body that we're going to they're gonna, we're going to create a lot of cuts, budget cuts that fall on middle income and poor people without having the rich pay their share. I just think he could have taken that case to the people and won, but he, he is totally unwilling to be adventurous in this whole category of rhetoric, I think. Uh, I think, you know, he definitely had a missed opportunity in taking this case to the people. He should have done it sooner. Um, but yeah. I think I think his hand will definitely uh, he'll definitely be higher. He'll have a much better hand uh, coming into uh, January 2013 uh, with uh, already expired Bush tax cuts, with uh, you know near trillion dollar defense cuts already gone through, and uh, four more years to protect Obamacare. Um, I mean, those would be just three huge um, uh, liberal policy victories uh, mm -hmm. that Obama would have in hand simply by letting Congress do nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there is also the point you made, and this is the thing that I saw Nate Silver echoing in the New York Times, sure. that if that if you look at when the cuts take place, the cuts that are the initial round of cuts that are part of this deal, 
they really, not much at all comes home to roost in between now and the election, right? That, that's the point that you had at noon today and Nate Silver had at 2.30 or whatever. And that's also, you think, is significant, right? Oh, well, you know, they had this stupid New York Times story about how the economy is going to crumble now because of this debt deal, right? And they had mm -hmm. some guy, uh, some uh, PIMCO vice president talking about how, you know, these spending cuts are just, are just going to cripple this, this recovery. And it, it's just all completely BS. Uh, uh, if you go by the Senate Democrats' talking points, um, they say there's only $7 billion for the cuts uh, in 2012 mm -hmm. in this deal. I don't know where they get that number from. Uh, the CBO score says it's it's twenty five billion dollars worth of cuts, mm -hmm. um, which works out to I mean what we we're talking about a fourteen trillion dollar economy here, and we're talking about twenty five billion dollars worth of cuts, so mm -hmm. that's why what point one percent. So uh, I think um, there was a what's her name Susie came over at the uh, yeah. Ezra's blog. Mother, uh, cited uh, Mother a, John. Yeah, cited a study saying that uh, what for every one percent of GDP in, in fiscal contraction, it, it's. Uh, Point, uh, it's a half percentage point a decrease in, in GDP. So I mean, mm -hmm. we're not even we're talking 0.1 percent. So we're talking 0.5 yeah. percent different. It's nothing. It's it's yeah. That's it's the a, number Nate had. Not it's zero point one. Yeah. The um. So you you do you actually think this winds up being a win for Obama? I, I mean, in political I'm terms, not, compared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so we're talking. Uh, you know, the the, the 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 title of my post definitely was trying to phrase it in just policy terms yeah. and set up front. You know, if Obama wins re-election, and that's a big gift. So I was not I I was not doing a, a policy uh, a politics uh, yeah, analysis of how this helps in 2012. Back. I was just saying, yeah. Yeah. look, if we assume he wins huh? in 2012, this deal sets oh, yeah. him up really great out of the starting blocks in 2013. Mm -hmm. If he wins in 2012. Um, and and meanwhile, it doesn't do enough damage to the, the, economy, to, the right, uh, right. to the recovery. In the meanwhile, to really alter the probability of his winning. Right. If you're, if you're, if you're a big economic determinist and you think this election yeah. is going to come down to the unemployment rate, I really don't see how this deal affects that at all. But I, I mean, I mean, I mean you, can, you, you can argue that you know they should have gotten you know uh, unemployment extension or another payroll tax cut. You know, but that, mm -hmm. I mean, that's different. That's saying you know we should have gotten stimulus three, stimulus four. But as far as the right. cuts themselves, the cuts aren't going to aren't going to be a difference. But what does the chances is, is it, what does affect the chances of re-election is the political perception of this, right? I mean, okay. the progressive that, that, base no, that's, is that, seriously that's true. annoyed. That's true. The progressive base is seriously annoyed. He's being depicted as more or less incompetent by everyone. I think. I mean, that's the official mainstream depiction of him. And they're also kind of depicting Boehner in that way, but you know, Boehner's not going to lose an election over this. I don't no, think. No, no. Uh, uh, and and Obama could. Uh, so I I uh, I'm of the opinion that the progressive base is not staying home from Obama. They they are they are going to come out. I, I I mean, you know, are the young people, um, you know, the millennials going to come out in the way that they did in uh, in 2008? I would say probably mm -hmm. not. Um, you know, you know, turn them off your problem, but. Uh, as far as you know, progressive base that you know came out, you know, voted for him in 2008. They're not going to abandon him. Mm hmm Okay. And so, speaking of the presidential election, can you, uh, unless you want to say anything more about this? Uh, no, we're good there. You, I think we covered covered all the bases. I think we, there are no remaining questions unanswered. Oh yeah, after clearly that. not. We answered pithy, them all. <laughs> the pithy analysis we provided. Um, Tell me about this, Repu this Republican presidential thing. I have not been paying all that much attention, i got to tell you. Uh, some people think Rick Perry is now the front runner. Should he ever become an actual runner? Um, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's been, it's been uh, definitely, you know, on the sidelines. I, when, when I, a bunch of my friends worked the, uh, you know, 2008 primaries, and every time I talk to them, they're like, you know, the, 2012 is just dead. By this time, I was practically a, I had practically moved to Iowa or New Hampshire. I was covering candidates all the time. It was you know front mm -hmm. page news. Now it's you know it's nothing. You know we just don't hear you know Romney or Plenty's name you know or Bachman's name at all much anymore. It's all you know Washington focused. Um, right, but that's about to change, presumably. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's it's. Uh, I was bored by it before, and I, I'm I'm going to be bored by it after. Um, but don't you think it was basically the debt ceiling issue that interrupted? No, it definitely but, interrupted. Um, yeah. But you know, I, it's just not. No one's. No one's really super interested on on the GOP side. I mean, you have uh, Romney, which mm -hmm. you know is the um, front runner, which nobody really is excited about or loves. 
Uh, mm-hmm. You've got uh, Bachman, who, you know, is the uh, Palin Tea Party stand-in candidate, which, you know, she has her own uh, niche, which, which she fills and, and is entertaining in her own right. But, do, you think she has a, do you think she has a chance? You know, I, last time I was I was I was on Blog Hands, I was talking with I think I think Annie um, Lowry, and I, mm-hmm. I predicted that uh, that Bachman would win the actual actually win the Iowa caucuses, not just the straw poll. I'll, I'll stand by that. I think I think she's definitely uh, a real force. Um, I no, I don't think she'll win the the nomination, uh, but I I think she'll she'll be she'll stick around for a while. She'll get close and to sticking you- around as much as as long as Huckabee did. Can you fill? Can you fill me in? Uh, I, have, I I'm really ashamed to say I just haven't been paying that much attention to the various things she's said that have gotten her for many for some time now ridiculed by progressives. Can you just tell me is she nuttier than Sarah Palin? Wow. Wow, that's a, is that a high bar or a low bar? Um, uh, I, that's for she, you. To, you know, she I is. Just, she's more disciplined. She is more disciplined than Sarah Palin, uh-huh. and she and she's uh-huh. and she's gotten more disciplined. She has toned. Uh, she's toned down her nuttiness. How about that? She's toned it down. She's toned it down. What's the, what's the craziest thing she's ever said? You know. Oh, that's really Dave Weigel. Dave Weigel's uh, uh, Ballywick. Um, uh, I'm sure it was either. I'm sure it's either gay marriage or Sharia law related. I mean, she she definitely was. Uh, you know. Um, uh, leaning on those issues back when how many of the candidates are, pl- are going to play this this is the thing that scares me most about this campaign is 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 the republicans playing the sharia card you might think there really? would be a little more well yeah i mean okay. because i just think it, it's it's a look well then you, then, you, then, you, then you saw herman cain back off last week right you mean was it was that in the wake of the Norway thing or uh, no? He, actually, he was, I actually don't think backing off earlier. I don't but, think it was Norway related. Yeah, but but look, I mean, this is this is how low the bar is. Backing off consists of wait a second, I've changed my mind. A Muslim could be in my cabinet. What? That's like a progressive position. No, no he, even, he, even, he even apologized for that. You no, know, he, he had a meeting. Well, well a meeting I would with... hope so. For God's sake, this is America. If a guy hopes to be elected president, I would hope he'd say there's not a religious litmus test for being a, in the cabinet. A, what I what I'd further hope. Would which hasn't happened, is that some of these people would say, you know, actually, there is not a threat that Sharia law is going to take over America. That's a lie that was fabricated to scare people. That's what I'd hope, but I don't think we're going to hear that, are we? Even in the wake of Norway? Um, depends on the candidate. I mean, I don't think you're, I mean, like I said, I, I think you have to go back and look at what, what Kane said, but he, he had a meeting with uh, some Islamic leaders uh, here in Virginia and uh, came out of that meeting immediately after and apologized. Um, so I think you know you you're having you're going to see movement from you know the Tea Party candidates on that front. Um, Tim Pawlenty has been very vague about about what he sees as the uh, um, threat from threat threat from uh, threat from Sharia law. I can't say that today. Um, but uh, no, I, I just can't imagine uh, Romney or if Perry gets in the race, any of those guys making any kind of issue out of it. It's I it's just it's such a you know. 2007 issue. You, you think? Well, I hope. I hope you're right. I mean, Gingrich was trying to play it. Oh yeah, uh, and he, Gingrich he, he, is totally a factor in this election. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, it was his calculation. Well, actually, there's arguments about what his motivation. I've heard from some people that this came. This was more like a mandate from his funders that he get into this, and I won't name names in terms of who the funders are. But well, I, mean, um, well, I mean, don't get me wrong. Gingrich has completely collapsed, not because of those statements, but because he took on Ryan. But he, you know. If anybody has done damage to his name in this process, it's it's Gingrich, right? Yeah. No, I just meant that that uh, that you know he's not an idiot politically, and and some would say it was his political calculation that this would be effective, and maybe that's worth some credence. But anyway, you're right; it wasn't the miracle uh, cure for him. Um, <laughs> not even close. So okay, so 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 you you disabused me of my fear of creeping anti-Shariaism, but. Um, the, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll invent some new thing to be frightened about Republicans from Bob. There's always something to wake me up at night. Don't worry. Um, but uh, so so. What about Rick? What about Rick Perry? I mean, he's he's. Uh, you would expect him to be pretty far, pretty extreme in this category and related ones, right? Uh, it's hard to tell. Um, you know, Eli Lake just just came out with a nice uh, nice piece covering. Uh, you know. Uh, Eli, uh, that you know, the, for, the foreign Perry, policy positions, right, right. That yeah. that Perry has always taken a more business um, attitude towards um, uh, dealings, uh, foreign relations dealings, which, uh, as you well know, often includes 
uh, Middle Eastern states. Um, uh, but of course, Eli also mm -hmm. pointed out that, that Dick Cheney also had this history before become, going into office and being, you know, becoming Mr. Right. Mr. Bomb Iran. He was. He was. A so, realist, so, yes. so the the evidence is mixed there. Um, you know, again, uh, you know, if, if Perry does run, it's not going to be on uh, foreign policy issues. If Perry does run, it's it's going to be on his economic record in Texas mm -hmm. and federalism and taking it to the EPA and Obama on 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 those issues. And do you think he does become a very strong candidate if he runs? I do. I do. Um, I, I I don't know if 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 he's going to be able to dent uh, uh, Bachman enough to become a factor, but mm -hmm. I, I do think he will uh, be more of a factor than than Fred Thompson was. I do. I do think he looks like the guy who would play the president in the movie, and that counts for <laughs> something. And unlike the other guy who fits that description in this race, he's not a Mormon. So. Um, he, uh, I'm afraid, has a has a chance. Did you did you see today that Romney came out against the uh, the debt limit deal? I didn't. I haven't. No, I haven't kept track of what what are our, uh, the, the presidential candidates saying, if anything. They're, Pawlenty's being vague, right? No, no. Pawlenty, um Last week, uh, everything with plenty is bad timing. But last week, um, the day, kind of after the Boehner deal came out, and people were kind of at first kind of against it, he came out against the deal. And then the very next day, um, all the Republican leaders and, and, and groups came on uh, for the Boehner deal. So it kind of looked mm. off message there. And uh, uh, the Boehner deal eventually passed. Um, but then, of course, this week, uh, Bachman's always been against it. Um, she, she actually stopped her campaign in Iowa to come back and, and vote against it tonight. And then Romney came out today against it, which was pretty much uh, roundly um, laughed off in the conservative blogosphere as, as, as Romney being the, the classic panderer that he is. Um, so it, I, I don't know, you know who, who he's appealing to by, by, by coming out against it, but uh, he, he did. Now, does Huntsman have a chance? No. No. Not at all? None. It's a shame. He seems like kind of a grown-up when it comes to foreign policy, at least. And, and, uh, but I guess that's a, pretty much a, a fatal flaw when, it, when you know, you're running... As a Republican, sorry, Con. That was no, I, 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 you know, well, first of all, I just, I just find it so charming that you keep bringing everything back to foreign policy when <laughs> this is this 2012 is not going to be a foreign policy election in any way whatsoever. Well, you never know. I mean, look, if we get hit by some kind of terrorist attack, that could change the tenor pretty radically. That's what happened with 9/11. You know, it wasn't during a campaign, but it certainly changed things. Um, and and things are damn fluid in the world, both beyond our borders and they're kind of bubbling within our borders. I would say so. Uh, you know, it isn't that I think it's 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 this is a really high probability event. It's just that uh, you know, if I imagine like ways for things to go to hell, which is what which I do, I'm sure you do, which is what I do for a living. This is one of the more likely paths. Is, is we you know we continue this pattern of freaking out and overreacting to terrorism and doing things that only make the problem worse. You know, like you know invading. <laughs> several more countries than is absolutely necessary. Hey, I got a question for you. Yeah, yeah. How how are you like in Libya these days? Um, is this is this the big uh, uh, reformation of uh, 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 liberal internationalism and uh, international you know, law at, that you hoped it would be? At, at the very beginning, uh, I was okay with it, but within days they made it clear that they were not actually going to respect the terms of the UN mandate. In other words, Was that really a surprise if, for you, Bob? Well, I am pretty naive, Con. I'm sorry. I, you I, said you it, can, not me. You can imagine a president. I mean, for example, should I run, and I haven't ruled it out, <laughs> and wind up and wind up in the White House, I would have, I would have done this uh, very much as uh, you know, an, uh, an exercise in the proper use of international mechanisms uh, of, of, for international security. And I would have said, look, if the mandate says this is about protecting civilian populations, uh, that is all we're going to do. Now, of course, I also would not have made the mistake that Obama made of saying early on, I forget the exact wording, but Gaddafi has to go. Well, once he said that, I mean, that's just stupid. It just puts him in this political position where there's such a temptation to exceed the UN mandate and go ahead and do regime change. And, you know, that's the mess we're in now. Yeah, no, so, NATO, NATO has, you know, said that that's their goal and they're, they've been trying to assassinate him pretty yeah. openly now. Which, but let me ask you: sure. How are you? How are you feeling about this uh, this this thing? Leave aside the UN's role. 
uh, you're thinking bad idea? Yeah. I mean, you know, this is one of those things where, um, I mean, no one likes Gaddafi. No one thought, you know, Libya was a, was a great place anyway to begin with. But, um, I mean, I just don't see the, the, the upside here. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. from what I understand of, of the rebels, uh, we're, we're not exactly talking about, uh, you know, uh, the Thomas Jefferson democracy, as, as uh, people well, like to say if they take over. Clear that it's not even looking like they can get their act together uh, necessarily. No, I mean, the, also, the, uh, Mullen was up here last week saying it was um, a, a stalemate. There's also, well, also there are divisions, there may be divisions within the, you know, Benghazi is suddenly uh, not looking so cohesive, so there may be divisions within the rebel ranks. Um, the, uh, there's also the other downside, just quickly, is that the, the kind of message it sends, and I didn't realize this immediately, but it was pointed out to me, like, look, I mean, Gaddafi basically played, played ball with us, you know, he, he ended his nuclear weapons program. Yeah, you're talking, you're talking back in 2005, for, yeah. Yeah, he ended his support for terrorism. And we say, okay, your reward is we're going to try to kill you, you know? I mean, that's no way to treat somebody who is basically playing ball in terms of his international obligations. Leave aside what kind of weird, you know, uh, autocrat he is within his borders. Um, but, uh, so anyway, I, I uh, no, this is not looking to me like a great policy success. Uh, but I will say the whole Middle East thing is very challenging policy-wise. It, it really, it really is. Is that, breaking, so, is that breaking news, Bob? You can quote me if you want. In fact, we could delay, <laughs> we could delay posting this so that you can write a blog item quoting There you go, and, and I can claim that it was, was my insight. You'll get all the attention. Yeah, <laughs> if you want. Uh, um, so we've been told to keep this pretty short. 30 minutes, but, uh, I think we're there. I think we're there. So if we, if we stop now and upload our files, we will have earned the approval and affection of saying, which is what I more or less live for. I don't know about you, Con. You know, I like to meet him today. I've, I've met you, I've never met Sang. You've never met Sang? No. Do you ever get to New York? Not often enough. Sang is everywhere. You can't walk into a Starbucks without meeting <laughs> Sang in New York. Okay, if, if, I, if I'm ever in town, I'll, I'll be sure to drop him a tweet. Do. He'd be delighted. And the, co the coffee's on us. There you okay? go. Okay, talk to you later, Bob. All right. Thanks, oh, Con. See ya.